Okay, here we go. Hello, and welcome to the Late Night Double Feature Picture Show. Uh, today, Pete and I, hello Pete. Pete and I will be discussing uh, a film released here in America in 1962 uh, called The Manster. Uh, yep, there it is. Um, interestingly, in Japan, it was released as The Two-Headed Killer, which uh, kind of kind of gives away a, a little bit of a plot point, <laughs> but, but is essentially accurate. Um, the Master was a, an American production filmed in Japan. Uh, I could find no information about uh, the budget associated with this particular movie online, so normally I like to talk about uh, what a film costs, but I can't really do that here. Um, so, uh, having said that, uh, Pete, you want to talk us through like the basic plot of this this classic? So it takes place in Japan. An American journalist working in Japan is sent up a mountain, actually a volcano, to um, to meet with this scientist who's conducting experiments up there. And the scientist, Japanese scientist, believes that um, he's created an en an enzyme that he believes will create a new species if it's injected into a human being. And he's been experimenting, presumably illegally, with human beings to try and create a new species. Um, so when the journalist meets up with him, scientist uh, kind of, you know, slips him a mickey, knocks him out, then injects him with the enzyme, and then it's kind of like, let's wait and see what happens kind of thing. Yeah, uh, interestingly, um, you know, early in the film, uh, you see that the scientist has performed this experiment on two other unfortunates. Uh, one who you discover was his wife, who, uh, due to the experiment, is uh, facially uh, terribly deformed. Uh, the other, I think, was his brother-in-law, um, who he injected, and uh, that guy just basically became like an ape creature. Um, so uh, early in the film, he, he kind of dispatches the, the, the uh, brother-in-law, the wife is kind of lingering. So, you know, this is clearly a scientist with, um, with issues, right? He's just injecting people willy-nilly. Um, so, uh, it, you know, in, in terms of this movie uh, and, and what you talked about, Pete, that this journalist injected, um, you know, eventually he starts to uh, um, show... Uh, very um, violent tendencies uh, and and uh, is constantly like grabbing on his shoulder and his arm where he was injected. So um, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the uh, the journalist and what he goes through. Yeah, he kind of like, he's kind of seems to be like a happily married guy. He's a foreign correspondent, so he spends a lot of time away from home. And then all of a sudden when he meets a scientist and uh, he kind of, he kind of, uh, uh, admits that he's not, not happy in his marriage. He's not happy in his life. He's always been on a job. He wants to try and, uh, you know, relax and kind of just live his life, let his hair down, have some fun. Um, his wife then, you know, tries to get in contact with him. He can't, she can't get in contact with him. He's just, you know, going out, boozing it up, going out with girls, drinking, uh, going on benders. And, um, as he's doing this, really the, uh, the, the side effects of the enzyme that he's been injected with kind of take over and they, kind of transform his personality into that of a, you know, not so nice guy. Um, and then of course the physical transformation begins to occur. Yeah. I, I think you hit it on the head. Um, <clears throat> you know, his character as the film progresses becomes, uh, more and more unlikable. Um, you know, he has friends in Japan who see a change in him and they're attempting to kind of figure out what's going on with him. They realize that his wife is worried about him, that she's, trying to contact him. He was supposed to, uh, uh, right after uh, meeting with the scientist, you know, come home in fairly short order back to America. He doesn't. She's worried about that. Um, so, you know, so as his friends express concern, he's like really nasty with them and basically tell them to, to piss off and mind their own business. And uh, eventually his wife uh, comes to Japan, uh, uh, catches him with a woman on her first night there and even then is willing to, um, to kind of forgive all that and, and, and mend uh, their, their marriage. Uh, and he's just having none of it. He's just snide and nasty and 
uh, gets physical with them sometimes. Um, and, you know, I, I kind of found that, uh, you know, no matter how good a friend you are uh, or how, how much you love your husband, you know, somebody being that abusive for that period of time, you think we'd eventually like lose interest in the guy and let him go off and do his thing. But the, these people in the film just continue to try and like save this guy. Um, so uh, to your point, uh, though, he becomes uh, much more of this kind of person, starts uh, stalking women in the streets, um, and he starts having these physical reactions. You want to talk a little bit about some of the physical reactions he has? Yeah, he keeps like pawing at his shoulder, like as if something's bothering him there. And then he pulls his shirt away one day and you see that it's kind of like a, it almost looks like kind of a growth is starting there on his shoulder. And then it transforms there. One day he pulls back his shirt and there's a, like an eyeball has sprouted it kind of on his shoulder. And we presume that this is the, the evolution of him into this new species that the scientist uh, was hoping for. Uh, and then, of course, um, uh, as we already know from the Japanese title of the film, that the, the two-headed killer, the um, the second head sprouts up out of that. Um, and at the end, they do actually you know, kind of split into two different beings there. The ape-like creature that you mentioned in the beginning, that her uh, brother-in-law kind of, the, the wife's brother-in-law, or the scientist's brother-in-law kind of became, and then him himself, um, but after he's gone on a murderous rampage. Yeah, I'd like to talk about that splitting scene uh, in, a, in a couple of minutes. But uh, yeah, what I found uh, fascinating about, um, you know, the science of this movie uh, is that, um, you know, so obviously the scientist injects him in an arm. Uh, and, you know, you would expect, you know, if you get a flu shot or a COVID-19 shot, you know, the area where you get injected is sore for a few days. But it seems for like um, days and days after uh, the injection that um, this, the journalist is, his attention is always focused in, in this area of his body where it occurred, you know, where the shot occurred and then where this um, kind of supernatural or maybe not supernatural, but this weird thing is going on. And I found that odd, right? Because even though you were injected in this part of your body, it's not like the enzyme stayed there, right? You were circulating through your entire system. So I kind of found that a little bit odd. I also found it really amusing that uh, he kind of went from this guy and then to kind of like this brute and then uh, his body started changing. But that one of the intimate intermediary steps was a giant eyeball on his shoulder. Like it, it, it just didn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. You would think that if you're going to like eventually grow another head on your body, um, that uh, the first thing to show off wouldn't be a giant eye. What would it be? What yeah, should it be? Like maybe like some like some hair, right? Like the top of a mm -hmm. head, right? So if you picture this thing is is going to sprout up out of the shoulder, right? What's the what's the thing that would show up first? Would be like the top of his scalp. So like maybe like a toupee. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't think that would have been as effective. Uh, well, we, we, interesting take on it. <laughs> uh, so. You know, while all this is going on and this guy is, is uh, becoming the monster uh, and, you know, he has, he has multiple uh, victims. He's, you know, basically like following women in the streets and like, uh, you know, you see him. I, my assumption is I'm not sure we see much of this on screen is that he's basically like uh, like physically abusing them, raping them and, and, and strangling them is my is my impression. Um, but uh, there's uh, the Japanese police are, are involved. And they're trying to track down this this man or this person who's committing these murders. Um, you know, one of the first murders that are committed is a Buddhist priest, a Buddhist monk. Uh, and um, in the act of uh, killing this monk uh, as a um, as the manster or as a, a guy who's becoming the manster, um, he he ends up with the the Buddhist prayer beads. And his best friend in Japan discovers this and uh, basically. Uh, eventually, as his behavior gets stranger and stranger, uh, and as the murders mount, uh, he finally decides that he has to go to the police with this piece of evidence, um, and uh, you know shares with them that here are these uh, Buddhist prayer beads, and uh, my friend had them, and it was the day after the murder of the monk. So this is how the police eventually get on uh, on to him. Um, I, I also did find really interesting. Uh, there's a couple of scenes where 
Japanese characters in the movie, not the two main Japanese characters. There's the Japanese scientist and his female assistant. Um, the two of them always speak to each other in English. Uh, but there's a couple of scenes where Japanese police officers, when the uh, Japanese chief of police is speaking to the other Japanese characters, he speaks Japanese to them, which I thought was interesting. It's an American production in Japan, but that they thought to put that like additional little note in there, having Japanese people speak to each other in Japanese. I thought it was kind of an interesting thing. Um, so one of the other things I found amusing, and I'll, I'll let you speak to this too, Pete, is that... Um, where the scientist lab is located, uh, when some of the characters step outside towards the end of the film, you can see the volcano in the background. Yeah, it's like an active volcano, yeah. Yeah, it's beginning to erupt. You see smoke spewing from it, lava stuff, right? But this is such a low-budget film that the, the perspective, the force perspective doesn't work. So, like, when you see characters step out of the house and you see the volcano in the background, it is just really obvious that it's a tiny little volcano behind the house. Do you, did you catch that? Yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, it, so just in terms of, of the sequence that uh, you mentioned earlier, the, um, the actual, uh, so, you know, eventually the full head sprouts out of the shoulder. We get some, uh, you know, the ubiquitous two headed creature things that you see in films where he's like basically wearing a trench coat. So you can kind of cover up the fact that this thing is not really a head and it's just mounted on your shoulder. And they show scenes of him running around. And of course, the head is kind of like bobbing around uh, because it's not really a head, potentially, which I find funny. Um, but eventually he progresses to the point where he's being chased. The, the, the police have him trapped on the mountain, on the volcano. And, uh, you know, the, the change is occurring. The head uh, is, about to, uh, is about to kind of split him in two. Why don't you talk about that sequence a little bit? Yeah, it's kind of cool the way they did it. Obviously, they can't, you know, with the technology that existed back then, they couldn't really, you can't use, you know, there's no CGI and a practical effect would be limited in its effectiveness. So um, it kind of, he kind of goes behind a tree. So you see his head on one side of the tree, the monster head on the other side of the tree. And then you hear this tearing sound as the creature that's growing inside him kind of splits away from his body. And you hear like he's, he, he like cries out in anguish. And then there's two separate beings there, but he's kind of fainted at a, from the pain, I guess. And then um, there's the other creature there. Um, but it's, it's pretty, I, I thought it was fairly effective. Yeah, for for what the film is, for the time it was made, for the budget, all those things. Um, you know, aside from the fact that there's a you know a scientific part of it just doesn't make any sense, right? How do you how do you rip yourself in two and become two completely different entities? You know, without like killing both of them right With right blood right but that aside um if you suspend your disbelief that aside the the effect really kind of does work you know the kind of being behind a skinny tree and the actor the way he plays it and the sound effects and the whole thing it, it really does uh kind of work um so you know eventually what you have is it's almost like the end of the film it's almost like a jekyll and hyde thing right the the creature that has been causing him to behave so badly, uh, murdering women and acting the way he has, is now separate from him, and now he's himself again. And uh, there's a sequence where the uh, where the two of them are kind of like battling uh, each other. So you see, kind of get to see him uh, battling against his uh, darker self. So uh, who who is that? Who's that? Who's that puppy talking back there? That's good. Uh, she is she is Gidget a fan of the monster? Yeah, she doesn't like those scary movies. <laughs> so um, she's wondering where her daddy is right now. <laughs> so uh, ultimately, uh, you know, what we end up with is, uh, you know, for this type of film, uh, it's kind of like a happy ending, right? I mean, this guy, uh, the 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 ape like creature, is I think thrown into the volcano. Yeah, it gets thrown into the volcano. Yep. Uh, and uh, so uh, this this correspondent uh, is kind of returned to himself, and he's, you see him being taken away on a stretcher, and uh, and his wife and his friend are, are talking, uh, and basically you know his wife is talking about like standing by his side uh, as he gets better, and uh, so you know for a, a film of that era, era for um, 
you know, a, a, a film where a guy is becoming a monster, uh, you don't usually get a happy ending, but you end up with one here. Yeah, it is unusual for one of these films to end happily and as as happy as it can, as happy as it can be in, in this situation. But the, you know, the scientist is killed. He, we forgot to mention, you know, when when the uh, the master uh, confronts the scientist in his lab, he actually kills him, um, stabs him to death, uh, and then the uh, female sci female assistant is also killed. Um, so everybody kind of dies except him, um, and. Um, like I said, they carry him away on a stretcher. It's uh, interesting too. I thought it was funny as as this laboratory is located on top of a volcano, but there's no road. There's not even a path. Whenever you see people going up the side of the mountain, they're literally climbing up the side of this volcano, which I thought was kind of funny. Yeah, it, it, to have, it doesn't seem practical. No, it's not practical at all. How, how would you get and, supplies? And the, and the scientist even says, you know, that he spends significant time in Tokyo and traveling, but he would have to hike up and down the side of this mountain every time he goes somewhere because there's no road or anything like that. So they didn't kind of think that one through. Yeah, a hundred percent. So I, I do want to mention that uh, the master is a bit of a precursor. Uh, about a decade later, there were two other famous or maybe infamous uh, two headed movies that came out. Um, the first of which was the incredible two headed transit from 1971. We may have to discuss this film on this channel one day because it's, it's, it's an incredibly bad movie. Uh, but interestingly enough, uh, a bad movie that stars Bruce Dern, uh, who is a, a good Hollywood actor, character actor, um, and Pat Priest. Do you remember where Pat Priest was from? Can't think of it now. Pat Priest was on The Munsters. She played, uh, was it? the Oh, no, Marilyn? Marilyn. She played Marilyn. Marilyn. She was actually two yeah. women played yeah. Marilyn on The Munsters. Uh, Pat Priest is one of them, so she was on there. And interestingly enough, also uh, with a role in this film, Casey Kasem. Really? Of, uh, yeah, Radio, what was it? Radio Top 40 uh, show that he mm -hmm. had for years. Uh, so that was the first. The second one uh, was The Thing with Two Heads, which is an in even more interesting film uh, because you want to talk about great actors being in bad films. It stars Ray Milan. Ray Milan won an Academy Award for The Lost Weekend. Lost Weekend. Uh, yeah, I think, what was that, in the 40s that he did that film? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, to fa have fallen from the Academy Award for the Lost <laughs> Weekend to now being in the thing with two heads. Uh, he co-stars with Rosie Greer, who was a, a professional football player at one time. Mm -hmm. The thing that's interesting about this movie, uh, the thing with two heads, uh, an interesting aspect of that film is that uh, Ray Milan is a racist, right? So when he discovers... <laughs> that his head has been attached to the body of a giant black man. Um, it, hilarity ensues, right? He's just like, he's not pleased with the fact that he is now partly attached or completely attached to a black man. So um, I would just say that the Manster is the uh, predecessor to those two early 70s classics. Okay, so having said that, uh, as we do here, Pete, uh, we normally give a, a grade to the film that we've watched and reviewed. So what are your thoughts on The Master? So I like this film. Um, it's only, what, an hour and 11 minutes long. Um, I like it, it's, I, I think I like it for its simplicity. It doesn't overthink too much. It just kind of puts it, puts it out there and says, here, take it or leave it. Uh, I kind of like it for that. I think the effects are, are, are you know, pretty, pretty well done for the time. Um, and uh, aside from the, the couple of things that are hard to believe, like you mentioned, like uh, two bodies splitting apart, one body splitting apart into two different creatures, yet nobody's nobody's really suffered any serious physical de devastation, which you would expect. Um, but um, I, I, I kind of like it. I think it flows well. It's you know, it's it, it kind of it's kind of a combination of science fiction, horror, action film because there's a detective film because they're trying to catch him, uh, trying to hunt them down and catch him. So there's a lot of chase scenes going on. Um, but I'm going to give it a C plus because I, I kind of like it. It's always been a favorite of mine. Um, like I said, it's, it's, I like it for its simplicity. It doesn't really, doesn't really get too complicated. Okay. Uh, I'm going to diverge a little bit, uh, and say it, it wasn't a great favorite of mine. So there are things about it that I enjoyed. Um, you know, when you're watching a film of, of this ilk, uh, you know, you're expecting certain tropes certain things like not the best acting or writing or special effects and you know and all those things are true of this film although also true of a bunch of other films uh, uh, 
that I love. This one I didn't love for some reason. I, I think it's okay. Um, you know, a part of part of the thing is I got so caught up with like what a bad guy the main uh, actor was, the main character. And you know, you understand why, right? He's been injected. He's becoming like this other being, but he's just so like, oh, you know, you're just like watching him. And I'm, I was just like, oh, somebody killed this guy. I know yeah, not a happy guy. But uh, so um, I'm going to give it a D. Uh, um, again, there were definitely things I enjoyed about it, but uh, certainly not uh, one of my all-time favorites of, of this kind of genre of movie. Do you want to take me to task for that? No, that's fine. Usually we're on the other side. Usually your ratings are a little bit more favorable than mine are, but that's fine. That's true. That's true. Um, Actually, last time when you gave that awful movie an A last time. <laughs> see, you, see, you, you, you have to get a dig in there somewhere. Um, so, okay, so that is our review of the Manster, and again, uh, an honorable mention to the thing with two heads and the incredible two-headed transplant. If you get a chance, uh, watch the Manster. Even though I didn't love it, uh, Pete really enjoys it, so give that a try. And as I say, as a triple feature. Uh, you couldn't go wrong with the other two films I mentioned. So uh, thanks for joining us. If you uh, found this video, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you found the video and you've seen any of the three movies we talked about, please give us a comment. Uh, we'd be happy to respond to you in the, in the comments below. Uh, and also, if you enjoyed this, please consider giving the channel a, a subscribe uh, as we're, we're trying to grow the channel. So. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, uh, thanks for being here at the Late Night Double Feature Picture Show. And until next time, be good. See ya.